Welcome to Lucid Mind Chemistry channel. In this video, I have compiled questions related to ideal gas equation and its use in finding moles, mass, pressure, volume, etc. for different gases. For similar topics and question timestamps, read video description. Question number 9, 1.8 grams of water, heated to 227 degrees centigrade in a sealed container, turns to steam with a pressure of 200 kilopascals. What is the approximate volume of the container? Question number 9, 1.8 grams of water, Heated to 227 degrees centigrade in a sealed container turns to steam with a pressure of 200 kilopascals. What is the approximate volume of the container? So now we'll see this is mm, from gases. So we are going to use the ideal gas equation PV is equal to NR. T. P is the pressure, pressure should be in pascals, V is the volume, volume must be in meter cube, N is the number of moles, R is the ideal gas constant and T is the temperature, temperature should be in Kelvin. So first finding the number of moles, 1.8 grams of water means 1.8 divided by MR of water is 18, so it is 0.1 moles. 227 degrees centigrade is the temperature, so converting this into Kelvin, we have 227 plus 273 and it is equal to 500 Kelvins. Pressure is 200 kilopascals, so we can also write as 200 exponential 3 pascals. Now we have to find the volume. Simply putting these values into the equation, so we have volume is equal to nRT divided by P. Putting the values, volume is to be found, number of moles is 0.1 moles. The value of R can be seen from the data booklet, is it is 8.31, temperature is 500 Kelvin and pressure is 200 exponential 3 pascals. So calculating this, the value of V comes to be 0 0.002 meter cube which can also be written as 2 exponential minus 3 meter cube. So the answer is part B. Question 6. A graph of PV against temperature is shown for a fixed mass of gas. P is pressure, V is volume and T is temperature in Kelvin. Which gas gives this graph over the widest range of temperatures and pressures? This graph shows the relation between pressure, volume and temperature. So as the temperature is increased, the pressure of gas also increases and the volume of gas also increases. So pressure into volume will also increase, so therefore graph is straight line. At higher temperatures, what happens is that the kinetic energy of the molecule increases, so therefore molecules move further apart, so temperature is directly proportional to volume. Similarly, for a fixed mass, temperature is directly proportional to the pressure. As more kinetic energy will be coming to the molecules, so molecules will exert more pressure on the walls of container. So we can say that temperature is directly proportional to the product of pressure and volume. At higher temperatures, this will be true for all of the gases. 
In the options, we have hydrogen, which is a small molecule. HCl gas, which has partial charges. HF, having hydrogen bonding. And oxygen molecule, which is larger than hydrogen. At higher pressures, what happens that the molecules will come close to each other and forces of attraction will develop. So as there are already partial charges on hydrogen chloride and HF, so the intermolecular forces will be the strongest among these two. So the volume of these gases will decrease more than expected because of the intermolecular forces of attraction. With oxygen, we can see that only dipole induced dipole forces will be present. which will result in decrease in volume. While in hydrogen, we can see that the smaller size is present. So therefore, the force of attraction will be minimum as compared to other gases. So hydrogen gas is more close to ideal gas. So therefore, it is hydrogen which will give this graph over a wide range of temperatures as well as pressure. The answer is therefore A. Question number 6. A sample of gas occupies 240 cm cube at 37 degrees centigrade and 100 kilopascals. How many moles of gas are present in the sample? For solving this question, we are going to use ideal gas equation PV is equal to nRT or we can find the number of moles like N will be equal to pressure into volume divided by ideal gas constant into temperature in Kelvin. Let's first convert the units into appropriate ones. We have 240 centimeter cube. For converting it into meter cube, we have to divide by 1 exponential 6. So the answer will be 240 into 10 raised to power minus 6 meter cube. For converting temperature into Kelvin, we have to add 273. So when 273 is added to 37, it becomes 310 Kelvin. The pressure is kilopascals. So we have to convert it into pascals. So kilo means 1000. Just multiplying 1000 by 100, we get 100,000 pascals. From the data booklet, we have the value of R, which is equal to 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole. We can also write this as 8.314 pascals into meter cube per Kelvin per mole. Now putting these values in the equation, we have 100,000 Pascal's pressure two hundred forty exponential minus 6 meter cube volume value of R is 8.314 pascals into meter cube per kelvin per mole. The temperature given is 310 kelvin. So cutting out the units pascal pascal meter cube will be cut with meter cube per kelvin with kelvin. So the value of n comes equal to 9.32 exponential minus 3 mole. So therefore correct option is B. Question number 6. When an evacuated tube of volume 400 centimeter cube is filled with a gas at 300 Kelvin and 101 kilopascals, the mass of the tube increases by 0.65 grams. 
assume the gas behaves as an ideal gas what could be the identity of the gas now different gases are present in the answer we can identify the gas by calculating the molecular mass of the gas and then we can find out which gas is present we can use the formula pv is equal to n r t where p is the pressure in pascals so p is equal to 101 kilopascals so we can convert it into pascals by multiplying by 1000 volume is in meter cube as it is given in centimeter cube so we can convert the volume into meter cube by dividing by 1 exponential 6 it is equal to 0.0004 meter cube n is the number of moles and the formula of moles is equal to mass divided by molecular mass so we can rewrite the equation pv is equal to mass divided by molecular mass into r into t by rearranging the equation we can find the value of molecular mass mr is equal to mass into r into t divided by pressure into volume r is the ideal gas constant and the value of r is equal to 8.314 pascals into meter cube per kelvin per mole last one is temperature temperature is already given in kelvin so we can write t is equal to 300 kelvin the mass of the gas is also given which is 0.65 grams so we can write mass is equal to 0.65 grams now putting all these values in the equation mass is 0.65 r is 8.314 temperature is 300 kelvin Pressure given is one zero one thousand pascals, and volume is zero point triple zero four meter cube. The values come equal to one six two one point two three divided by forty point four, which is equal to forty point one two. Now this is the M R of the gas that is used. From periodic table we can find out the molecular masses so the molecular mass of argon is 39.9 for helium it is 4.0 for krypton it is 83.8 and for neon it is 20.2 the nearest value is 39.9 so therefore answer is a Question number six: X, Y, and Z are all gases that behave ideally and react according to the equation shown. This is the equation: one mole of X reacts with two moles of Y to form two moles of Z. When three moles of X and three moles of Y are placed inside a container with a volume of one decimeter cube, they react to form the maximum amount of Z. The final temperature of the reaction vessel is one hundred twenty degrees centigrade. what is the final pressure inside the reaction vessel in this question we can see that one mole of x reacts with two moles of y to form two moles of z so therefore the molar ratio is 1 ratio 2 forms two moles of product in the question they have given three moles of x and three moles of y so therefore let's see which one is the limiting reagent So we have three moles of x and three moles of y. Now we can see for two moles of y we require one mole of x. So therefore, for three moles of y we will require half the amount of three. So one point five will be consumed and one point five moles of x will be left behind. So it means x is the excess reagent and y is the limiting reagent. now the product also depends on the limiting reagent so as two moles of y form two moles of z so therefore three moles of y will form three moles of z so now the number of moles of x consumed will be 1.5 number of moles of y consumed will be 3 number of moles of z formed will also be 3 
Now to find the pressure, we have the formula P V is equal to N R T, where P is the pressure, V is the volume, N is the number of moles, R is the ideal gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. So P will become P is equal to N R T divided by volume. So in this reaction, 1.5 moles of X has completely reacted with 3 moles of Y to form 3 moles of C. So therefore, X and Y are consumed. Only 1.5 moles of X is left behind and 3 moles of product is also left behind after the chemical reaction. So in order to find the total number of moles left after the chemical reaction, we have 1.5 moles of X and 3 moles of Z. So therefore, we have 4.5 moles in total. And this is shown by symbol N. Now let's convert the units according to ideal gas equation. We have one decimeter cube volume. So therefore, this will be converted into meter cube. It will become one exponential minus three meter cube. Just divide this value by 1000. You will get this value. The temperature is 120 degrees centigrade. Just add 273 to convert it into Kelvin. So we will have 393 Kelvin. Now the value of ideal gas constant from the data booklet is 8.314 Joules per Kelvin per mole. We can also write this as 8.314 Pascals into meter cube per Kelvin per mole. Now putting all these values in this equation, we have 4.5 moles into 8.314 Pascals meter cube per Kelvin per mole. The temperature is 393 Kelvin the volume of the gas is 1 exponential minus 3 meter cube now just cancelling out the units we have mole per mole per Kelvin Kelvin meter cube with meter cube so only Pascals is left now the pressure comes equal to be 1.47 exponential 7 pascals. So therefore correct option is C. Question number 5. In this question you should assume methane behaves as an ideal gas. The gas laws can be summarized in the ideal gas equation below. PV is equal to NRT. The volume of sample of methane is measured at a temperature of 60 degrees centigrade and a pressure of 103 kilopascals. Volume is 5.37 exponential minus 3 meter cube. What is the mass of sample of methane given to two significant figures? We are going to use the ideal gas equation. For ideal gas equation, the pressure must be in pascals. As we have kilopascals, so it can be converted into pascals by multiplying by 1000. So it will be equal to 103000 pascals. The volume should be in meter cube as it is already given in meter cube. N is the number of moles and we have to find the mass, the molecular mass of methane as it is CH4. So 12 for carbon and 4 for 4 hydrogen, the molecular mass is 16. So we are going to use the formula moles is equal to mass divided by molecular mass and we can find the mass. R is the ideal gas constant and its value is 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. T is the temperature and temperature must be in Kelvin. So we can convert degree centigrade into Kelvin by adding 273. Now we can rewrite the formula. Pressure into volume is equal to number of moles into R into temperature. Pressure into volume is equal to mass divided by molecular mass into R into temperature. Then mass will be equal to pressure into volume into molecular mass divided by R into T. 
Now putting the values, mass equals pressure. Pressure is 103 kilopascals. So we can write 103000 pascals into volume, which is 5.37 exponential minus 3 meter cube into molecular mass of methane, which is 16 divided by value of R, which is 8.31 and temperature, which is in Kelvin, 333. Now by multiplication and division, the mass comes equal to 3.198 grams. As we have to give answer to two significant figures, so it means the first two figures will be used as 9 is more than 5, so it will be equal to 3.2 grams. The answer is therefore C. Thanks for watching. If this was useful, please do like, subscribe, and share.